Hello and welcome to a new video. Um, this is a continuation of my Japan vlog. This video starts right after Mount Fuji. Um, we were going to Hakone and this is one of the trains that we rode on. It's Naruto and Boruto themed um, because there's a place called Fuji Q Highland in the area which is an amusement park and it has I think a section just for like these two anime but I thought this was really cool you usually don't see a lot of themed trains like this at least like in the cities so I like taking videos of them whenever I can and then we also stopped at the Evangelion merch store in Hakone and now we're just walking around the area we stayed at in Hakone was very quiet very isolated. Um, I think it took like 20 to 30 minutes to walk from our hotel to where all the shops were and it was very very hot and we were very tired but it was just very beautiful here like the rivers I haven't seen anything like this before. I got so much inspiration here for new paintings. I'm not really a landscape artist, but it feels like I'm heading that way in some of my work. Yeah. I thought this was really pretty too. I think this was mochi when we got it. It was only 80 yen, which is like 80 cents. It's still amazing to think about how giant the mountains were here. I'm not used to this much nature, so it was just really, really calm to be around, especially after a long day of hiking yesterday. <laughs> I completely forgot about this, but we were starving all day. It took four and a half hours to get from Mount Fuji to Hakone and so we didn't eat until 5 or 6 p.m. I got tempura ramen in like a shoyu like soy sauce broth. It was really really good. Just not a great idea to get a hot soup on a very hot day so I was exhausted right after this. There's just tons of scenery like this in Hakone, and I really hope that we get to go back because we only got to be here for, I think, five hours, and now we're leaving the next day. Um, the rest of this trip is mostly in Tokyo, and it's mostly a lot of shopping for the rest of this trip. And so we stay in Akihabara whenever we visit now, mostly because the Akihabara train station goes to so many places that we like to go to. And the first thing we did there is go to our favorite pancake place. It's the French Toast Factory in, I think, Yodabashi Camera. It has the signature Japanese fluffy pancakes, which I completely love. And I said there'd be a lot of shopping. Here I am at the K Books in Ikebukuro. I'm looking at all the Ingo and Emmett stuff. I saw all this stuff last year and look, there's still the plushies that I saw for $600. <laughs> no one's buying any of it for this price. There's Emmett. Emmett for 44 And then there's a store with fan gamer merch at the very top. I didn't buy anything here because I know I can get this stuff cheaper in America. And then I was so excited for this. This is at Tokyo Skytree. I've been hunting like Japanese Twitter to try and figure out what Hamtaro merch is still out there. 
This stuff was so expensive. I have no idea if it was from a cafe that happened like a few years ago or if this is just Skytree merch, but I was really excited to get those little plushies of them as mochi balls, even if they were $25 a piece. <laughs> And then, still at Skytree, we just went down to the food court and I just got ramen because I was really in the mood for ramen. And then my husband got takoyaki, which is uh, fried octopus balls. We didn't get to go out to shrines this time, but I was still able to get some good footage of some really pretty back streets while we were walking around at night. And then we found this um, Racing Miku exhibition. Uh, it just opened up like the second day we were in Akihabara and so I was really excited to go. Um, we were one of the first people in line and it's literally just you go around and you get to see a bunch of the racing Miku merchandise and some of the car um, hoods that they use during the races, I think. Um, it might just be for display. But there's a lot of really cool merch. I really love the racing Miku style. And I took some footage of some of my favorite ones. But yeah, I think they do a new design for Miku every single year. And I don't remember each year that these designs were done. But the new one for this year was made by the guy who designed like the Italia Riza girl. <laughs> And you can kind of tell based on how he designed her. And then they had costumes of each of the Miku designs, which I thought was really cool that they kept them for all these years. But yeah, this was just a really cool exhibit that I didn't expect to see. And then I got to go to one of my favorite art stores in Japan. It's Umatsu Art Supply Store in Shibuya. This is a very small art store. There's two floors and they have a lot of the paints that I really like. They carry the Holbein Artist Wash paint, um, which I only ever see in Sakaido. And they have this Holbein uh, oil paint, which I would love to try out, but I just can't risk bringing oil paint on a plane back to America which is really unfortunate because they have all this oil paint varnish and medium that I would just love to try out but I'm just gonna stick to gouache now. I could try these pigments that they have as well but I just don't know how to make my own paint yet. And then I went to this Godzilla and Hamtaro collaboration store and I went here last year but they have a bunch of new merch this time and so I got a couple things. I got a bunch of stickers because I've been hunting for Hamtaro stickers and then right after I went to Sakaido in Shinjuku. Um, this is the other art store that I love going to. I got a couple tubes of, I think, Holbein gouache here, and I think maybe some Turner gouache. Um, I'll have a video of this, of all my art supplies I got next week. But the thing that's weird about um, Sakaido is they put the Iridori Holbein gouache in with the paint mixing area. So it's not in the same location as the other gouache. And this is the only store I've been able to find the Iridori sets in. And then for our last day, we went to this old um, train station that got converted into like a art museum type place. 
Um, there's a cafe at the very top and then there's this place where you can sit and watch the trains go by on both sides. This is just so cool to me. They have plants growing in this area. There's no air conditioning, which, you know, was okay. But it's just windows all around. You get to see all the trains going by. It's just like perfectly my aesthetic. I would love to come here at nighttime to see all the trains go by while like it's hitting sunset and everything's turning dark just a super peaceful way to end our trip and so I'm very happy that we found this place and we walked the long long walk here in the blazing heat So yeah, this used to be an old train station. This is part of the old railway that they had. And they, instead of just demolishing this, they just made two tracks go alongside it. So you're always just hearing the trains go by. And it's just super cool. I had no idea that this existed until I saw a video about it right before we came to Akihabara. And then it was time to go home. Um, we had a great time here. Doing Mount Fuji the first day or first few days really did destroy us for the rest of the trip. So we were just tired and hot the entire time. But I'm excited to go back again when I have the chance. But honestly, I was most excited to go see my cat again. And so here she is. She seemed to do a lot better this time when we left and she's happily watching the bunny family run around. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video where I go over the art supplies I bought. Alright, bye!